Hello, this is Robert here. I value the opinions of my subscribers. Would you be able to help me, please? And this isn't a request for money. I've never asked for money on this channel. I received a complaint today, and it's from a person who I deeply respect. Uh, this person is a fine Christian who runs another YouTube channel. This person told me that at times I'm far too harsh in my comments on the evangelical church and evangelical Christians. Um... The person actually said that I condemned all evangelical Christians and I pointed out that I'm very careful with my words. I have never said all. I've said many or most, but never all. Um, I'm not an evangelical Christian myself. I've made that clear. Um, after the terrible things that have happened to me, I've come to the conclusion that I now very firmly reject this movement. And... I've suffered for many, many years. Um, the most terrible things have happened to me. Often at the hands of church leaders who are usually cannot be challenged. I think that's the problem. It's not that mistakes are made. It's that when a mistake is made, if you are in church leadership and it's a one man band church leadership, um, it can be swept under the carpet. That's my main objection. That just happens too often. And then the other church pastors, they all stick together. Um, so everyone just covers up bad things that have happened. Now, I was told by this uh, fine Christian person who runs another YouTube channel that Jehovah's Witnesses who leave the Watchtower, they need community. And so my comments, particularly when I go on, and I have gone on a little bit, I, I must admit, about Billy Bob Pastor, Billy Bob from Louisiana, and, you know, him wanting a Mercedes and a second home in Florida and so on. My comments of that sort of nature prejudice Jehovah's Witnesses against them finding fellowship, which they need, I was told, within an evangelical church community. Now, I value my subscribers' opinions to this. I do make mistakes. I've made many mistakes. Uh, hopefully I can learn from those mistakes by admitting if I'm wrong and correcting things and moving forward. What is your opinion? Am I too harsh? My main problem isn't that mistakes get made. My main problem with most, I didn't say all, please, I did not say all, I said most or much of the evangelical church, is that clearly there is no real effective system of genuine accountability. There's also far too much nepotism. Nepotism means that you appoint your wife or your son or your daughter or your best friend in church leadership positions. And I think that the paying of a salary to a one-man band pastor can, it doesn't always, but it can in some cases lead to a system of hierarchy um, where the leader cannot be challenged because being a church leader is, is his business. It's how he makes his money. And so because it's his business that he supports his family with, they can't allow themselves to be challenged. Now, I'm not saying this is always the case. There are some, um, I, I mean, my position would be similar to the brethren on church leadership. I, I, I believe if I look in the New Testament, churches were run by a plurality of unpaid elders. And this person, uh, who runs another YouTube channel, said that's what Jehovah's Witnesses also do. And I said, yes, there is, of course, one big difference. The brethren try to go back to the Bible to determine um, what's right and what's wrong. And also each brethren fellowship will appoint its own elders. I believe in the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower now appoints elders or um, the um, leaders through the circuit overseer. Um, have a big input in appointing elders, which I think is wrong. And of course, the Watchtower doesn't go from the Bible. They go by the Watchtower magazines, which is totally wrong. But my main problem is, if something goes wrong, and I said, unlike, believe it or not, and I'm amazed I'm going to say this, unlike the Catholics and the Anglicans, who 20, 30 years ago, I would regard most of those people as not even saved. OK, you know, I was young and immature at the time. Please, please show some mercy to me. But now I'm older. Now I'm in my 60s. Well, I think the Catholic system is a pretty poor. I think the Anglican system is pretty poor. But it's streets ahead of many local evangelical churches to me. Where 
I mean, I mean, the Catholic Catholic priests don't have wives. Well, unless they're converts for the Anglican Church, and there's only very, very few of those. They don't have wives. They don't have children, and they're not supposed to have children. So in Catholic churches, you don't find the, the leadership position of the church um, run by the priest and his wife and his, his son and his daughter. But I've seen that over and over again in evangelical churches, and it produces a culture where everyone sticks together, they're not prepared to accept any error, um, and the pastor will support his children, who are in leadership, to the death, no matter what they do, no matter how crazy. Uh, it means that you can't make a genuine complaint. So, I mean, I would never regard a church that denies the Trinity as a Christian church. I'm absolutely fanatical about that, and I'm quite happy to tell you that. And if you think I'm wrong about that, I don't give a... I couldn't give a hoot what you think. I am a passionate, fanatical Trinitarian because I used to be an anti-Trinitarian and God led me out of that. God led me out of the oneness movement. Christ led me out and I'm not backing down to the day I die. I don't care what the consequences are. I don't care if people don't like me. I won't compromise an inch on the doctrine of the Trinity. When I've gone to churches time and time again, and it's not just the pastors themselves who will deny the Trinity. But I will hear other leaders who, who also deny the doctrine of the Trinity. And I'd be here for hours if I gave you examples of this. Um, I've written in a text comment, in about 2009, I attended a church run by one man. It seemed to be a one-man band pastor, okay, whose son who is the associate pastor, he's groomed to be the next leader. OK, this is a, a young man, less than half my age, he's in his 20s. And he promoted the claim that Jesus is God the Father in a Plymouth evangelical church, which on its website claims to be a Trinitarian church. Now, I brought it politely to the person's attention that um, the person he was ministering with when he went to, he was sent by the church on an official church evangelism um, um, program to New Zealand or Australia. We're talking about 2009, I think. And he ministered with T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes is a non-Trinitarian. And I was just attacked. The, the leadership closes ranks and they attack you. You're, you've got bitterness, you've got pride, you're not humble, you're not teachable, all this sort of thing. And they just want you out of the church. I mean, <laughs> they want you out, honestly. Um, later on in the same church, the pastor gave away magazines. Um, and there were adverts in these. Every person who attended the church that Sunday got a church magazine. The pastor thought was very, very good. In that church magazine were full page ads for Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Now, I went to the trouble of burning to DVD and printing out on a sheet of A4 paper little clips of Kenneth Copeland um, saying the most outrageous blasphemous things, including uh, denying the Trinity and say, I am a little guard. And I had the actual quote or the actual video clip that you could hear or see. And I gave on a piece of paper what was said. And I gave the, the reference and the date when it was published. And it was just dismissed out of hand that I'm some sort of crazy person. I, I, um, uh, and, and I remember um, a um, church elder was used as, as the attack dog. He asked me about where are the gifts of the spirit, and I said, "Well, you know, here." You know, I went, I went, I went to the Galatians. I started reading the, the gifts of the spirit. When I finished, he looked at me and he said, "Well, Robert, I don't think you've got any of those yourself," and just walked off. And of course, I never went back to the church, which was the whole aim. Churches want you out. You you can reach a certain level of biblical knowledge, and they want you out. You're a threat. Or am I wrong? Am I some crazy person who runs a YouTube channel? Because I've been through everything. Yeah, I've been to prison for 28 days for standing for what I thought was the gospel. Very childishly and immaturely. I can't say what happened. But I was in the street evangelism group. And um, 
They didn't break the fifth commandment. They didn't break the sixth commandment. Things happened amongst church leaders that I, I can't mention. <laughs> and when I tried to bring it to the attention of several churches that were involved, everyone closed ranks. No one would talk to me. It's always the case. And I wouldn't back down. I made very foolish, childish, immature YouTube videos about 15 years ago. And I went to prison for 28 days for that. Although at a retrial, it was reduced to a £250 fine. Um, I've taken an overdose. When I was working for the YMCA in North London, I had a gun fired at me. Although I must say, the personnel department at head office of the YMCA uh, did try to help me. Um, it would be unreasonable for me to say that um, everyone treated me unharshly, uh, as uh, I was uh, treated harshly by um, other people. Um, when I was a schoolboy at Buckfast Abbey, my housemaster, Father Benedict, got 12 years for what he did to boys. One mild instance happened to me. Everything's covered up by these people. And yet I honestly think, you know, this lady said, who runs this YouTube channel, that, you know, you've got to help people to find fellowship. Well, you know, what happens if that fellowship drives them to take paracetamols or decide they can't keep, you, you know, because that's what it's done to me. It's driven me to madness, these people. They hate me. And I am convinced that many, many people hate the gospel. I think much of what calls itself the church, I believe there are genuine, fine Christians in all churches, including even corrupt organisations, pretty corrupt organisations like the Anglican Church and the Catholic Church. I've even prayed with two Jehovah's Witnesses. I can't give their details. I have to keep that private. But I prayed over the telephone with one and over Zoom with another Jehovah's Witness elder, I, I would believe they were my brothers in Christ because they believe in Christ's deity and his humanity. Uh, they didn't understand much about the Trinity, but they were Trinitarians and they were Jehovah's Witness elders. But they said, we have to get out slowly. These were two separate discussions. Both of them said the same thing. We have to go out slowly because we want to take our family with us. So we can't just say, I am a Trinitarian, because we'll be disfellowshipped and we won't be able to speak to our family anymore. So they're doing it over several years. Um, there are fine Christian people, I believe in all organisations, even in the Catholic Church, even in the cults. But I think you want your head sorted out if you think that the vast majority of what calls itself Christianity is Christian, because it's clearly not. I can't tell you the number of times I've been told that Jesus is God the Father. I've had people tell me, my home group leader in 1991 from St. Austral Baptist Church told me that the Trinity was pagan. I swear, I swear on the Bible by Almighty God, I am not lying. I'm telling you the truth. I attended that church for a month and they came to my house. There were busybodies, the busybody woman, loved going into other people's lives, going to other people's families. My mother, you see, um, who's dead now, she was convinced that I, 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 I was a Jehovah's Witness. Well, I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. I was evangelizing Jehovah's Witnesses. That means that I'm preaching the gospel to them. I'm not agreeing with Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm disagreeing with them. But all her friends, my mother would say, I am a Jehovah's Witness. So she got through to these church busy bodies who were my home group leaders and they came to sort me out because you see, I, I shouldn't be a Jehovah's Witness. They wanted to speak to me in private. And I asked her and I swear, I swear by almighty God, this is true. She told me the Trinity is pagan. The Baptists didn't baptize correctly. So when they said that and because they had links to um, Northern Ireland, I knew they were connected to a oneness group in Ulster. Um, so I asked her the question, do you believe the Son of God is created or eternal? And she said, created. <laughs> and he was sitting next to her like a lemon saying, saying nothing. I've been told that God is male and female by church here in Plymouth. Um, it's not that these things happen. I, I try to share with the person 
who runs a fine Christian person who runs another YouTube channel. I try to share with this person that the problem isn't that mistakes get take place. The problem is that there's no system of real genuine accountability. People can act totally, utterly, do exactly what they like in a great many churches and they just get away with it. And everything's swept under the carpet. That's the problem. And that also goes for the more traditional churches. You, you'd think, well, you know, if you go to an Anglican church or a Methodist church or a Catholic church, you'll be dealing with a person far better educated than me. I've, I've got a bachelor's degree. Uh, I haven't even got, I have not even got a first. I've got a 2-1, which is the second best degree. If I tried to join the Anglican church or the Catholic church, they wouldn't be very impressed with a 2-1. You know, they'd want nothing less than a first and then probably a master's degree on top. And some churches would like a doctorate on, on top of that. So, you know, you'd think that people who have a, a higher level of education in the Anglicans, the Methodist, two of the finest Christians I ever met were Methodists, by the way. One's, one is dead now. But they do the same as the evangelicals. When they come across a scandal or something that is very bad where people have been hurt, it's always the same thing. Don't get involved. Sweep it under the carpet. Just pretend it doesn't exist. And the churches have, getting, have got a really good, well-deserved reputation for hypocrisy. Uh, and, and I'm not saying all Christians are hypocrites. I'm not saying all churches are hypocrites. I'm just saying when the world looks at the churches, often it says hypocrites. Because everyone knows one or two scandals in your local church and it's all been covered up. That's my main problem. Uh, I go on in this little text comment to say my main problem is that unlike the Roman, Roman Catholicism where you can genuinely appeal above the local priest. So if you complain to the priest and he's not too bothered, you can complain in Catholicism to the bishop. And if that doesn't happen, you can complain above him to the cardinal. And in theory... If that doesn't happen, you can then complain directly to the Pope. Whereas in some evangelical churches, they're run by one man band pastor families. You've got the pastor's wife as a leader, the pastor's son as a leader, the pastor's best friend as a leader, and the pastor's the one who receives all, the, all of the money. You know, once they pay for the roof and paid for the heating, uh, paid for this, that and the other, the money goes to the pastor. Well... It's kind of like a, a religious business. It's kind of like Scientology. <laughs> if you find something wrong in Scientology, it's no, there's no point in complaining to Scientology. They're not going to listen to you. They're just going to say you're mad, you're insane, you're a suppressive person. I think that's what they call you. They're not going to take you seriously. They're just going to ignore you and move on and try and get more and more money. And please, I'm not saying all churches are like this. There are godly, good Christian people, far better than me, in all churches. Um, but the churches do have a reputation. And uh, I was a bit hurt thinking back of the conversation I had with this person, a fine Christian person who I respect. I'm now feeling kind of hurt. And I don't think I got across my point of view that there is no accountability. When something wrong happens, it's all covered up. And this happens time and time again. If it's a wicked scandal, as happened in Plymouth um, many, many years ago, when I was in a church evangelism group, other churches know about this. Of course they do. The educated Anglicans and the Catholics I'm sure some of them know about this, maybe not all of them now, but yeah, of course they do. And everyone does the same thing. Everyone covers it up. One church pastor does a favour to another one because they cover up each other's scandals. And that's why the church has such a terrible reputation in the world. They got a reputation as just a bunch of hypocrites. And it's not true in some cases because there are fine Christian people far better than me in all churches. But unfortunately, this tendency to say you can't question this church leader, you can't challenge this church leader. Look, just tell me, am I going on a hobby horse? Am I wrong? If you think I'm wrong, um, please put it across graciously to me because I am rather hurt. My life's been destroyed by my church experience. 
And um, I do feel that you can, you know, I'm, I'm not a great scholar. I'm not a great Bible teacher. I'm just somebody who runs a YouTube channel. But I think you can you can learn something of the Bible and you can mature a little bit in the Christian faith. And then the Christian faith becomes very difficult for you. Because you have to make a decision. You know, um, where, when I attended that church in Plymouth and I was handed a magazine with a full page advert promoting Kenneth Copeland Ministries and there were other smaller adverts for other faith teachers, I could have just laughed it off and done nothing, but I didn't. I made a stand. It was wrong. I wrote to the pastor. I went to the trouble of burning that DVD, going to the trouble of giving a, a A4 sheet of paper with all the quotes clearly referenced, so I'm not making stuff up. It's almost as if you reach a point in your Christian walk where it becomes more of a curse than a blessing. Because you can't look the other way. You have to act. And the biggest problem with Christianity today, people think, well, it's Jehovah's Witnesses. You've got to stop the Jehovah's Witnesses. Other people say, no, 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 you've got to, you've got to stop, the, stop, the, stop atheism. Other people think it's a political thing. Promote Donald Trump. And other people will say, no, no, stop Islam. Actually, the biggest problem with Christianity is the Christian church. That's the biggest problem.